Hey there, Julie with foodstoragemadeeasy.net and today I'm going to show you how to use some of the additional features we've added to our three month food supply spreadsheet. Now if you've already completed our three month food supply spreadsheet and want to use some of these features, don't worry, you don't have to start over or redo it. I'm going to quickly show you how to copy paste some of the um, new features into your spreadsheet and then I'm going to show, uh, show you how to use the actual features. So. The new spreadsheet is now available on the website. If you have the old one saved on your computer, what you're going to want to do is open it up. So here is a copy of an old one I have. And as you can notice, on the bottom of here, the, the, we have your three-month supply and a sample. And then there's additional sheets that you can add. Well, that's exactly what we've done in our new spreadsheet is we've added some no sheets. So if you want those sheets, this is how you move them over. It's pretty simple. What you need to do is you need to have yours open and the new one found on the website open. Once you do that, go to the new one, and as you can see, the new sheets are down here. There's a common food item sheet, and then a non-food item sheet, and an instruction sheet. Those three are new. So you can just click on the actual sheet, and it's just a good old copy-paste. So you click in the corner, that will select the whole sheet. Hit copy, either by hitting Control c by clicking a copy button, or by right clicking and hitting copy. Once you've done that, you're going to want to go to your sheet because you don't want to lose all the data of all the meals you've already put in. Once you get to your sheet, you go to the bottom where it says sheet one or a little arrow or a little plus sign to add another sheet. And you click on it and then you just paste that information right in there. So now as you can see, we have all the information from the new spreadsheet into your spreadsheet that you don't have to recreate. To name this sheet, you just double click where it says sheet one and we can go ahead and name this non-food items or whatever you want to do. You know that's useful for any, um, if you want to make any sheets that are custom just to you, you can just add them like that, double click and then name them. So that's for the people who already have the old spread or the other spreadsheet and wanted to add the new features, we didn't want to leave you out. So let me show you about the new features, how they work and what they are. Um, the first one is just an instructions page. We used to have the instructions page on the actual main sheet and we had to make it really concise to make it fit. Well, we moved it to its own sheet and put in a few more um, details if you happen to not want to watch the video again or happen to miss something in the video. Hopefully this can supplement your sheet. Then we uh, have the samples still, then we have the common food items. Now the reason we did the common food items is there tends to be um, a bunch of ingredients that most everybody is using. And so when you're planning your three month food supply, you can do it one of two ways. Um, you can, let's go to that page first however. You can go ahead in here and put in all the ingredients, a list of all the ingredients you could possibly ever need. Um, if you can think of them all or if you're going through your recipe book, that works just fine. However, one of our readers said it would be really helpful if there was already a list of all the ingredients that someone else has thought up of that they could possibly need in, you know, just a bunch of common foods. So what we've done is we've compiled that list and it is in column A. So in column A, we have a whole lot of different ingredients. You may use most of these, half of these. They may not, you know, they may not fit your cooking style, but if you want to, you can go ahead and highlight them from the top to the bottom, and again, copy over into here. So if you're brand new and you haven't done your sheet before, this could actually save you quite a bit of time. Now they're listed um, by category and then alphabetically within it, and as you can see, you can't see all the way. To be able to see all the way, you just put the cursor in between two columns that you want to see. If you just slide it over, then it lengthens it out. And now you can see all the ingredients. So when you're planning your meals, for example, let's say we're going to make pancakes for breakfast on a day. Well, you can easily go ahead, hit pancakes if you're using a pancake mix. And if you know you use about a half a pancake mix for your family, just go 0.5 and there you go. Let me make this a little bigger too. So already you have it filled out. Um, so that's one thing you can use or not use or use part of. If there's ingredients in here you don't ever use and you don't want it in there to delete it, just go ahead and say, hmm, let's see, what will I never use? 
I don't like ham at all. So I especially don't like canned ham. So what I can do is I click on the number, right click, and then just hit delete. And so that uh, this ham will never be on my ingredients list. So you can just copy it over, go through it, see which ones you think there's no way you're going to use, right click on the number, delete them, and then you have your ingredients. And you can plan your meals and plan the portion of the packages that you're going to be using for them. Next up, we have the non... Oh, actually, let me go back here. That's column A. Column C, these are items that are commonly considered either long-term or spices. When I made my three-month plan, if I knew I needed to add some chicken bouillon or some soy sauce or something, I wasn't about to measure out a tablespoon in my plan. I just try to have an extra one of these on hand or an extra two bottles on hand. So some things people don't want to go ahead and plan, some people do. So it's up to you how detailed you want to be if you want to include your whole wheat and your dried beans. For me, I just have enough stored in my long-term food storage that I know will be fine for my three-month plan that I don't even put them in my plan. But you can, you can be as detailed as you want. You can plan down to the very grain of salt. So that's up to you if you want to use this column. So column A is kind of more typical. Column C is the items you just kind of want to have one extra of, or you can use if you want. The next tab is an exciting tab, we're excited. It's just a little tab on non-food items for you to use. It's a mini spreadsheet um, for you. If you figured out you need for three months, you go through you know, six tubes of toothpaste, you can say you want to store six. And if you have two of them already on hand, you put that there, and so you know you need to purchase four. So this is just a quick spreadsheet that you can make um, for your non-food items. Figure out how many you need to store put how many you have on hand and then there's your shopping list. You can go ahead and buy those items. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you is the columns C through E right here. We've had some confusion on what these are and so I just wanted to to go ahead and show you what they, what they do. These actually have nothing to do with determining how many um, you know boxes of Bisquit or Alfredo sauce bottles or anything that you need to buy. It has nothing to do with that. What it is, is a price comparison little um, worksheet for you within it that if you are comparing something, if you're going to buy it in bulk and you need to know how much something is price per ounce or price per pound, you can do it right within here and have a place that you can just keep track of all your prices because you have all of your ingredients in here anyways. So for example, if something were you know $2 and it was 16 ounces, then you know that it's 0.125 um, cents an ounce. So then if you were to say, okay, well if I buy something for you know, $4 and it's 30 ounces, well, is that a better or worse price per ounce? So anyways, you can just use that for all your ingredients. Keep track of how much the price is of the, the size you typically purchase. Uh, anyways, if you have any more questions, let us know. Hopefully this helps you uh, plan, make it a little bit easier gives you some more of the non-food items for you to be able to actually plan for for your three months too because those are important. Good luck and we'll see you later.